Hi, and welcome to episode six of Root Beer Library, where we wear the frothy stash. Today we have a drive-in dive special. This is the Dog and Suds Root Beer, which actually comes from a Midwest drive-in hot dog and root beer stand. Uh, we're gonna learn a little bit more about that, but let's go ahead and pop the top and get into it. All right, so today we are tasting Dog and Suds root beer. This is a, what they call a drive-in style root beer. It is a Midwest drive-in hot dog root beer drive-in stand um, that was started. Well, let me just give you the history real quick. So we've got uh, Dog and Suds had a humble beginning back in 1953 in Champaign, Illinois, when Dan Hammerker, Hammerk, and Jim Griggs, sorry, butcher our names, uh, two music teachers from the University of Illinois opened a hot dog and root beer stand. Rapidly, Hammerker and Griggs' success became known in central Illinois, which led them to forgo the teaching profession and get into the fast food franchise business full time. Dog and Suds in the 1950s, 60s, and 70s became one of the most successful fast food franchises in the country. Uh, Joe Van Dam opened the Lafayette Dog and Suds in July of 1956. The Van Dam family ran the Lafayette location for 42 years because of the community support. A second Dog and Suds in West Lafayette opened in 2005. Still today, the Lafayette and West Lafayette restaurants are both locally owned and operated. So there's a little bit of history on Dog and Suds. This sounds like a road trip. Um, yeah, I think that's something we're gonna throw checklist. Totally on there. Um, I did not check our list of 365, so let's do that real quick. Is Dog and Suds on our list? A, B, C. Dog and Suds is on our list, so there's another one on our list of 365. Mentioned in episode one, I got a list of 365 root beers to taste. Um, for us to go through, and this came from the root beer store, which I'm gonna have to start ordering some stuff from because locally I'm limited to maybe a hundred of these. Um, but Dog and Suds is on our list, so we'll check that one off. Um, let's get into this a little bit. So, typical bottle, just a brown typical beer bottle. Um, nothing super fancy, no embossing. Um, nothing really fancy going on other than we got a label with the, the Dog and Suds logo right there. So um, I'll find a picture of that online and throw that up on here so you can see a little bit more what that is. Hey, real quick question for you. If you're from the Lafayette area and you're watching this video, please shoot me a comment. Let me know if you've been to Dog and Suds. Let me know maybe a little bit more about it, what your thoughts are on Dog and Suds, uh, how the food is there, how the root beer is there, um, and what they serve. That would be kind of cool just to get some some feedback from those that are um, hitting up the Dog and Suds locally. Let's go ahead and pop this top. We'll get a look at the color, taste, aftertaste, and all those fun bits of information. I like to take a quick smell out of the bottle when you first open it, see what it gets. Pretty spicy. Um, got a frosty mug again today. We got the Cheers mug. We're rocking that. Get a nice pour. Whoa, get some froth. Maybe I will get a frothy stash out of this one. Man, that's got a good smell. Spicy, I'm not getting, no vanilla. And I, just caveat, I've never had this before. I'd actually not really heard of Dog and Suds until I went to the store and look, they had it. It's because I'm in California, not in Illinois. Nice smell to it. Um, it's not really robust with the spices like some of the other root beers where you get that and you're like, mmm. You know, it's really strong, spicy smell, but it's got a nice, nice smell. Um, color is a, it's a lighter caramel color. Wish I could do that here camera wise and show you guys the color a little bit more intense. I'll try and figure that out. Uh, but as I look at this, it's definitely much more of a light caramel creamy color. It's it's a little more see-through than some of the other ones. Other uh, root beers in the last couple of days of tasting have been a really dark, dark, deep, dark. You can't really see through the cup. From here, I can kind of see right through the cup. 
So it's not as dark or, uh, or caramely, I guess, uh, would be a way to say it. The other ones have been more black than this one. So a little bit lighter of a color. It's got a good smell, but it's not, it's not that punch of spice that you, you get with other root beers. Good. It's flat. It's kind of a flat taste. Uh, I gotta just be straight up and honest about it. That's what I'm doing here. It's a pretty flat taste. No real aftertaste with it. Um, I mean, there's a little bit you know, when you first get it and it first hits your palate. There's that root beer, but other than that, it's it's like taste is gone already. So pretty flat. Um, well, and this is part of, probably part of the deal here. It has like half the sugars of the other root beers that I've tasted up to this point. Today's day six. And of course, I've tasted many root beers over the years. Um, this one definitely, um, that's why there's not as much of that kickback flavor, that flavor that's hanging in and it seems flat. This has only got 30 grams of sugar. Most root beers that I see have 64 grams of sugar. So uh, that's per serving, which would be a bottle. Yes, this is not a health food drink. If you thought it was, you're in the wrong place. There are some there that are more healthy. And when we get into actually making root beer down the line, and we do some of those episodes, I'll show you how to make a healthy root beer, kinda. Um, but that's gonna be part of what this is. I mean, it is a pure cane sugar. Um, typical ingredients, the carbonated water, pure cane sugar, caramel color, phosphoric acid, you know, sodium benzenite, um, and then other natural flavors and colors. Let's go ahead and taste this again. Smells just not, it's not robust. I did that one without swishing it around just to see what it would be like as if, because you don't swish. Let's be honest, who sits there and swishes and swallows? Um, it's flat. It's a flat root beer as far as root beer flavors go. It's got some carbonation in there, but it's not a huge amount of carbonation. Um, so it's not as carbonated, it's not as flavorful as I would like to see in a root beer. And that's again a personal opinion here. Um, it's not bad, probably really good with a hot dog. That would be my guess and assumption. We will come back around on this one. This is definitely gonna be, I'm noting it here so you guys can call me out on it. We'll do a throwback Thursday with this one and I'll get a hot dog. Maybe we'll travel out there and do the episode there. Um, that's, I'm gonna put that on the calendar at some point. We'll do a throwback Thursday in Lafayette at Dog and Suds. And so it's out there now, so hold me to it. My, here's my deal with this one. It's pretty much, it's not bad, but it's not great. Um, I honestly, I wouldn't buy this to drink as, as a root beer, um, but I'm gonna try and pair it up with some foods and we'll see how that goes. I'll let you guys know. So again, um, thanks for watching. Please don't forget to like and share. Um, my name is Matt. I was your host today, forgot that in the beginning. Again, I'm on episode six, still figuring it out. But uh, again, thanks, thanks for watching. Please like and share. And uh, as always, let me know anything that you think I can do better here, as well as let me know if there's a root beer you think I should taste. Thanks again, guys. We'll see you tomorrow for episode seven, and you'll have to check that one out to see what it's about. See you next time.